gene expression from these bacteria will affect gene expression from your body and vice versa. And then you get fetal transplants. Um, but basically, <laughs> this is all of it and sort of how it works together, um, at least in regards to the disease state. Um, <laughs> because I decided to go with disease state because that was the diagram that a friend of mine that I've been through. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, this is everything and sort of how it interacts. All right, so what, what can we do with all this shit? Um, so, <laughs> among other things, um, like what might be termed a psychological disease or disorders, um, there's dying um, and other general illness. And as you can see, cardiovascular disease, infection, parasite, malignant neoplasm, respiratory, um, we're only at 7% for unintentional injuries. I also like this graph with suicide, violence, and war as intentional injuries. Um, and you've got neuropsychiatric disease, it is you know, gerontology, nutritional deficiencies. So outside of unintentional, which I don't know which of these is intentional, but outside of unintentional non-injuries that aren't diseases and intentional injuries, the rest of these are at least in some way related to one, if not all, of those genetics. Forms. Um, whether it be your actual DNA, the epigenetic changes of it, or the met metagenomic reactions and the gene by environment, etc. So what researchers are working towards is personalized medicine where you can get all of these things sequenced and then put it all together and then no one will ever do anything ethically wrong with it. Um, but <laughs> if you're in all seasons, Live forever and genomes. If you want to learn more, please visit <laughs> the genetics home reference at ghr.nlm.nih.gov. <laughs> Here you can learn about conditions James Chromosomes Handbook wants. We also have resources for you. And please see our in the spotlight section. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Adam. How far are we away from the moon? We're already there. No, no. <laughs> no um, uh, pretty goddamn far, actually, but it, it's hard to tell with things that are going at an accelerating pace. Although, sequencing technology is accelerating faster than computing technology right now. So, part of the reason assholes like me can get a job is they've got so much fucking data coming out and not enough computing power to handle it all. And they're, they just, you know, need people that can do that. Um, so yeah. What does radiation do to like DNA RNA? How does it, how does it mess it up? Do you know? um, I mean, roughly, it's breaking down the bonds. And then you just get point mutations that may or may not be an issue. Um, I kind of skipped cancer on this because that's a whole shit show, but um, with radiation you can get multiple different mutations and actually several types of cancer aren't the result of one mutation. You have, for some cancers to exist, you, they're actually multiclonal and they require several different types of mutations at the same time just all being pissed off together. Uh, because otherwise your body is pretty generally good at fixing things that notices our errors. Um, but where I showed the error slide, that's a very easy one where it's just like, here's a mutation in one thing where it just doesn't match the other side where it's supposed to. Not all mutations end up being that. Yes? Is there any chance at all that that human beings are a mixture of space aliens and monkeys? Um, while space aliens and monkeys and humans may share a common evolutionary ancestor, I don't think it would be accurate to describe them as a mix. Well, is there, well, I guess what I mean to say is, like, is there still a missing link? And is it possible that that link is otherworldly? I find the term missing link fallacious because 
Uh, I think there are so many fucking things constantly being found that the claim that there is a missing one, there's always going to be a link between this and this that you haven't found until you have like every offspring down the line which you're never going to have. So as long as you have any space between any fossil record or any genetic record, you're going to be like, well, where's the link between those? It's like, find it. The next one we find, fuck it. Um, but yes, aliens are awesome. <laughs> I uh, think we need a sequence from an alien to answer that question. They got it. Well, <laughs> part of the problem is that whereas humans have the four bases CGAT, uh, aliens only share three of those bases and then have seven that aren't actually using elements that are on our periodic table. So a <laughs> couple of them are extra dimensional. So we haven't quite developed that technology to get the sequencing done appropriately as yet. <laughs> as a scientist, I disagree with you. <laughs> as a Scientologist, fuck off. <laughs> I can see your theme from here, boy. <laughs> so uh, did you see that study where they made a mice scared of a certain smell? And then its offspring was scared of that smell? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that goes into the whole epigenetic inheritance thing. Um, I didn't read it thoroughly enough to like tear it apart and tell you all the reasons that it fucked up. Because yeah. uh, that's a fun thing to do, but I didn't do that. So do you think that there may be inherited memories? Um, well, funny thing, there are inherited behaviors. Uh, there's actually a very easy, uh, easy to reference study uh, where a group of people have, have been taking rats and measuring their burrowing structure. So rats will burrow a certain distance down, bend at a certain degree, and burrow a certain distance further. And this is completely inheritable. They always do it the same amount based on inheritance. Uh, so there are inherited behavioral traits. I work in behavioral genomics, actually. Um, and it's really easy to measure because you just inject the hole with bone after the rat's not there. <laughs> yes. I think I read somewhere last year where they had done traits of mice and they found that the children of mice that the mazes were able to look better than they would by a chance. Is, is, is that ring bell to you? Is that something? I have read that one. Um, I it's, it it's, it's possible. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was curious if you knew about it. Do you think they could be carried? It, it's, it's possible, but I don't know without reading the study whether or not it's a shitty study. Yes? On the topic of smell and like uh, rats that like certain their parents, the smells that their parents liked, um, this is probably not connected, but I've noticed there are certain kinds of armpits that are like better than other armpits. <laughs> And I heard once somewhere that that that, you, that the human responds to an armpit um, because of the, the kind of bacteria that grow on it are conducive to the kind of genetic like it, it like it's, it's a good genetic match if you like someone's armpits. That's what uh, I heard. You, yeah, I've, I've read this study. Um, this is so it is related to a genetically measurable trait, whether or not that trait is what causes it, or again, with the whole like, this equilibrium, or if it's just something that is connected, but they were able to show um, that when people wore a neutral deodorant, and then wore shirts uh, and sweated in them, that when the opposite sex came by, and I, I feel like it was only males wearing the shirts and females smelling them, but I could be wrong, um, that when the opposite sex came by, and smelled the shirts that they rated the ones that came from people that they had the opposite uh, genetic tag for. Uh, they rated them higher. Did you want some and also genetically disparate from the Yeah. Um, the other thing being that they also made claims that the smell reminded them of former uh, boyfriends and lovers. Um, Another exciting uh, aspect of, I don't know if it was the same study or a follow-up, apparently this uh, olfactory trigger reverses on birth control. Ah. Which, you know, could explain any number of divorces. <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't read the follow-up study, so... And the oopsie babies from those... Uh, Connor, yes. There are, see, two hands. One, one more. 
One more. Who do you want? Uh, Joe. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, you've already asked about Well, they've already done things like that. They've managed to get DNA to actually perform basic mathematical functions. But what he's talking about is being able to figure out a sequence that can get you to do anything that a protein can already do, or figure out what would modify that protein to make it function in a specific way. Like, once the body of evidence is there, sufficiently to know what to do, there's no reason we can't just manufacture it, is what he was saying with that. Uh, you can look his talks up online, it's great mentor. Um, and I think if you just look for like DNA as program, you'll probably come up pretty damn quick. What's his last name? Venter. Venter. Not Venter. No, <laughs> it might be Venter. Venter, but I think it's Venter. Okay. Like the E-N-T-E-R, if I remember right. I think that's yeah. right. Kevin Black. <laughs> so now I'm sure that we can all go home and change the water of life so that we can activate our other, our Bene Gesserit other memories. Uh, but we've come to the part of this evening where uh, we have the intermission. Um, do please come back for the second speaker, Jerry Matt, talking about dinosaurs. Um, but during the intermission, remember that the, first off, think about what you're going to lecture on for your lecture. And uh, also remember that this is a community building uh, venture that we're in here. So if you could, during the intermission, find someone to make out. Uh, thank you, and see you in about 10 minutes. <laughs>